the markers again. You... Okay, question five in the 2015 paper. Right, this is a, one of your three markers again. You can see I've started to pull some data from the data book. The periodic table is an arrangement of all the known elements in order of increasing atomic number. The reason why the elements are arranged as they are in the periodic table is to fit them all with their wildly, widely, sorry, not wildly, uh, diverse physical and chemical properties into a logical pattern. Okay, fair enough. That's a nice statement of what the periodic table is. Periodicity is the name given to regularly occurring similarities in physical and chemical properties of the elements. Some groups exhibit striking similarities between their elements, such as group one, and in other groups, the elements are less similar to each other, such as group four, but each group has a common set of characteristics. Using your knowledge of chemistry, comment on similarities and differences in the patterns of physical and chemical properties of elements in both group one and group four. Okay. Right. So I think the best place to start is, well, you could just pull a, a full periodic table, but I've just pulled, if you go down here, the basics of the electron arrangements one. I've just pulled out group one and group two, eh, sorry, group four. Um, so if I'm talking about why they're in that group at all, I would start with explaining that we have the end outer electron is the same in both. So group one, we're looking at the end is one, and in group four, we're looking at the end is four. And that is going to decide an awful lot of how they actually behave. That is a nice start, okay, for explaining that. What you've then got in group one, and we have a problem with hydrogen, so you can deal with that in terms of just saying that hydrogen is there because of the electron arrangements, but otherwise doesn't fit fully into the pattern of what you expect. But these guys, the alkali metals, they are very clearly similar chemical properties. And you could just, you know, write an equation saying, you know, sodium plus water giving you sodium hydroxide, that would be a nice wee one to put in there um, and then do the same for cesium. You know, it would be a nice kind of set of this one. But then in group four, what we've got is a split of metals, non-metals at this point here. So what we actually get is a split in terms of how they, they bond, okay? So up here we have covalent bonding and below that we, start, we have metallic bonding. You could argue that from a a structural point of view, they're all still forming kind of large lattices, but the bottom half we're looking at a metallic lattice and the top half we're looking at a covalent lattice. That'd be a nice physical thing about them that you could talk about. And what that's going to impact on would be your things like your melting and boiling points. This is, a, this is me just pulling out the melting and boiling points data. So again, we have a hydrogen on its own and a bit strange because that is actually a covalent pattern. But all of these ones going down the way, what we've got is metallic bonding um, and all dissociating off one electron to create the metallic bond, which is obviously metallic bonding being a nice property that you can talk about. But then what you've also got is a reducing melting point here. And that, sorry, boiling point at the top. Um, no, melting. Melting then boiling. Okay, so what you've got going down the way is a decreasing one because they are finding it harder and harder to associate with the delocalized electrons because they've got electron screening in between each one. Now that's, that's definitely higher. You don't know anything really about that kind of positive pool electron shell screening at Nat5, so that would be a nice one to do. Okay, And then we have, again, in the group fours, they are all quite high for different reasons, but it's back to that kind of lattice idea that you can talk about um, and again we've got our kind of covalent structures and our metallic underneath um, what you've also got in carbon is this odd one where you've got sublimation so I mean it's not a perfect pattern but it is a similarity in terms of they're high okay um, what we've also got on this one I pulled the covalent radiance so covalent radius what we're really seeing is the, at the atomic size and Again, hydrogen actually fits within this pattern reasonably well. Um, what we've got here, again, is increasing shells, shielding the charge from the centre, hauling in the electrons from the outer side. And we actually have exactly the same pattern in group four. That's a nice one to put in. Okay, Using that kind of idea about the, the electron shell shielding, another similarity of pattern 
would be to go to ionization energies and electronegativities. Because what you're seeing here is how easy it is to remove electrons, just going by your your first, okay? Um, for group one, so let lithium here, you can see the big jump from first to second because you are dropping down a full shell. Um, and you'll see the same pattern in all of the group ones that you get this big jump. That'd be nice to state. In fours, however, um, you actually can't see it because first, second, third, fourth is all stripping out the top shell. The next one would be really super, super, super hard to get rid of because you've lost a screening effect. Okay, again, that would be a reasonable one. It's a nice pattern. It's a similarity. Um, you can do the same chat about the electronegativities, the same argument. Okay, so there is quite a lot of nice bits that you can pull out the data book to, to use um, and hopefully pick up enough points that you're showing that you understand why these groups are groups. Okay.